participate with us as our service has already begun. Good morning. Wow, what a beautiful scene to see this sanctuary full for the glory of God. He is our cornerstone, isn't he? Orchestra and Jim, thank you for leading in us that time of opening worship. It's a beautiful day here in Spartanburg. Now, tomorrow is going to be something awesome, isn't it? That happens, what, once in a lifetime? The Great American Eclipse, right? Yeah. Can you imagine? the God of the universe, the one who made his presence known by creation alone, we have no excuse but to recognize there is a God Almighty. And he is the reason we're here to, today. Let's confess that to him as we stand right now and as we sing, open up the heavens as a prayer. We want to shout it unto the Lord because he, we want him to do that through his Holy Spirit this morning to open up the heavens and to reveal himself in all of his glory. We waited for this day, we gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the that's it. He's the reason. You're the yes. reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our way. 
Father, how we worship you in your holiness. You are marvelous. You are the magnificent one, the God of the ages, and we adore you today. Father, we thank you for the way that you revealed to us the living word, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. And today, Father, we worship Christ Jesus who has saved us. He is all that we need, and we adore him, and we praise the Son, Jesus Christ, as we worship him. Amen. Let's sing unto the Lord this morning and worship him together. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This full of storm, this solid ground, the fiercest ground and storm. Thank 
that again together. How wonderful to see you today and what a wonderful blessing to be together like this and uh, to serve the Lord Jesus together. Uh, my informed sources tell me uh, we need to squeeze a few more people in here. So I think we could get another 20 people in here. And if you have so much as a little picnic spot next to you, would you pick up your sandwiches and your flask of tea and just kind of nudge the person next to you and uh, find another little spot? And uh, we do have some of our folks um, who are making their way down to Overflow, and we've got a wonderful setup in Overflow and some of our staff, and uh, it's just going to be a wonderful experience today. This is the day that God has given to us and, uh, you know, when you use that phrase, let's just rejoice, let's just let it go. Let's just give it all to the Lord. I love you so much and just thank the Lord Jesus for each one. You know, you will have in your hand this uh, 
worship guide and bulletin that we've got looks like this. And uh, we try to put in some of the highlights of what's going on. For example, the bridge, we have so much going on there. That mission right here in our backyard, God is doing some amazing things. Opportunities to go overseas and serve the Lord. We've got a trip coming up to Asia. Um, and then all the activities here going on on our campus here in Spartanburg. So take an opportunity. The part that I love very much is the Connect card. It's called the Connect card because we believe that as a family together, we want to be connected together. And we are here for one another. You know, I have personally prayed with about six or seven people this morning, uh, just in the various places, in life groups, um, just needs, things coming up, circumstances. And that's what friends are there for. We're here for one another. So make use of that opportunity and make sure that you get an opportunity to do that. Well, we're going to sing a, a wonderful song, How Great Thou Art. Here's what I want you to do when we sing this together. You know that refrain, then sings my soul. Now, some of you today are not going to feel like that. You don't always feel like that. You might have lost your job. You may be facing surgery. Maybe you're having a rough time at home, going through struggles in your marriage. Then sings my soul. Yes. Just worship from your heart. Let it go. Just let it go. Like you're at a ball game and your favorite player just hits a home run and you just stand up and just cheer. You just, just let it go. Then sings my soul. Can we do that together? Let's stand and sing from our souls. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee.
has held the oceans in his hands, who has numbered every grain of sand. Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to
Our Father, this is the only reason we give, because we adore you. We give because you're on your throne. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Please be seated.
Let's pray together. Our Father, you alone are the magnificent one. You are marvelous, marvelous, glorious. You're the one. And Father, we come before you today, all of us. We're sinners. We're a sinful people. And yet you love us. You love us so much. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, red, yellow, black, or white, whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have eternal life. Right now, there are people giving their lives to you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. We celebrate with the angels in heaven. Lord, a, a word about me. Just hide me behind the cross. People are looking at me. They see me. Let them, let them just hear a voice. And let it be God who speaks through me, through your word, this precious word, this word which is true. How desperately we need truth in America today. Just truth. We want to know the truth because the truth will set us free. In the name of Jesus, I speak the word of truth today. And we worship you. We, only by your grace, because we cannot do this, please help us to let worship lead. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts is, is an absolutely amazing book in the Bible for many, many different reasons. But just in case you didn't know this, the book of Acts talks about the early church. So here we are in our day and age today, and we've seen a few years come and go since the early church was first established. The church was established following the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God gave us the church. There are many different churches. They're wonderful churches. In our community, we've got many, many wonderful churches all across America. Uh, there are wonderful churches like ours. So when I say to you that the church is in trouble, what I'm saying to you is the same sense in which I say that about America. Uh, if we were to take a survey here today, how many of us love America and would do anything for this beautiful nation? I'm right there. Um, best place in the world. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You know, I stand here today and I'm so thankful to the Lord for the history of our country and for this nation and for men and women across the board who make such a difference, the American spirit. So when I say to you that America is in trouble, I think all of us get it. We need something real bad. We really do. Something's going on. And we need divine intervention. That doesn't diminish my love for America. 
I'm a very spoiled, most grateful pastor because I have you. I have a congregation like this. Rarely have I seen, I certainly haven't in my life. I mean, just over the last couple of months alone, let alone over all these years we've been together, the faithfulness and the love and the service. We need a fresh word from the Lord. A lot of people who don't go to church anymore, (laughs) they don't want to. And I'm going to say this very lovingly, in some cases I, I don't blame them. I can understand. It's a lot of hurt. And do you know that you can grow weary in well-doing? You know, you can do something so well over such a long time that it just wears you down. Now, you want to talk to prime people like that, go and talk to a young mother. A young mother never stops loving her little ones. But I'm glad I was never a young mother. It would have worn me slapped down, I'll tell you now. I mean, it's like relentless. It's non-stop. I mean, mothers, young mothers with children, I'm telling you, do they go around, around the clock? I mean, it's like dealing with a whole bunch of squawking chickens all at the same time. And if one's not squawking, the other one is. It's almost like you can guarantee. And so a mother can become very worn down. Here's what this is all about. I want you to ask God to give you a fresh start. There are many of us, many of you, for a lot of reasons, are just worn down. You know, sickness will do that to you. Persistent sickness. Persistent marriage troubles. (laughs) Persistent issues with your children. You know, I could go on. I want to move on from that. See what happened here in the book of Acts. Jesus went to the cross and he gave his life. He was the difference maker. He gave his life. And after he had risen from the dead, he went and appeared to many, many people. And after he had appeared to many people, he gathered together with his early church. Now, they were just a small group. It's not about numbers. Not about numbers. You know, I pastored a church in South Louisiana for six years. And uh, my wife and I will tell you some of the most wonderful experiences of our lifetime. (laughs) Just rich. My favorite story is when we arrived there. Okay, so this is over 35 years ago when we arrived there. and, And I prepared for Sunday night. I mean, all week, and got there on Sunday night, there was nobody, nobody showed up for a man of my caliber. Can you believe that? (laughs) I mean, that's a nice, how do you do, you know? (laughs) And I had it all, man. I had it written out. I had it down. Nobody showed up. I mean, just nobody. So I told my wife to sit on the front row, (laughs) and she got about six barrels full. Do you know that my wife got saved seven times that night? (laughs) I mean, I I see that hand. I see that. It was right throughout the whole thing. Look, this is not about numbers. Jesus gathered these people. He loved them. He really loved them. Do you know that he loves you? Really loved them. And they were quite an interesting group of people. Maybe one of these days in our study, I'll break down some of their lives Because God used them so mightily despite themselves. And just start with Peter. You know, you go through through these early disciples, and they had their struggles just like us. 
All of them. They were living in the fabric. They were doing life together, walking on long, dusty, windy roads. All of them. And you can imagine how weary they were. I mean, they were facing everything you can possibly imagine. Jesus gathered them together. Now, you're going to hear that a lot. Jesus got them to come together. There's a picture of the church. So I'm going to pick up, if you've got your Bibles, in Acts chapter 1. I want to just read verses 4 through 8 for you today. Now, this is Jesus after the resurrection, and he's about to speak to his small group of believers, to the first gathering of the early church before it even really became a church. They hadn't decided yet whether they were going to be Baptists or Methodists or Presbyterians or Episcopalians or Bush Baptists or never being a Baptist or don't ever want to be a Baptist or a Southern Baptist or a Northern Baptist. They hadn't made any of those decisions because they hadn't had any deacons meetings yet. (laughs) This was the early church. This was the beginning. And Jesus was about to go back into heaven. And what he said to them was very important. Let me read it to you. And while he was staying with them in verse 4, and by the way, that little word staying there in the Greek text also means while he was eating with them. There's a real sense in which, now watch this, when Jesus was there with them in the church, there was a real sense of fellowship going on. I tell people, When they ask me, why should I go to church? One of the things I tell them is because the fellowship is out of this world. Just being with people who are like-minded. While he was staying, while he was eating with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which Jesus said, you heard from me. Verse 5. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit a number of days from now. So when they had come together, there's the early church again, when they gathered together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Now, I've heard all kinds of things even this week, that this solar eclipse means Jesus is coming back, that this is the sign. All I'm going to tell you is if he comes back, I'm ready. Are you? But the Bible says none of us. It's not up to us to know the signs. Now, there are signs of the times, and we're going to come to grips with that, and we study that. But Jesus was trying to tell these people, focus on what I'm about to tell you to focus on. Otherwise, you're going to become a very distracted people. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Isn't that an amazing statement? Jesus here saying to them, you, believers, will be My witnesses, by the way, I just want to say this, all of us who know Jesus are witnesses. Did you know that? Some of us are jolly bad witnesses. Some of us are sort of okay witnesses, and others of us do a pretty fair dinkum job of being witnesses. But if you're a believer, you're a witness because people are watching you. They're watching me. He says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Now, here's what Jesus was saying. And this is what I want you to get hold of here today. Jesus essentially gave them three commands. That little word there that we get in the texture, he ordered them. Now, we don't like, you know, we're a people, we don't like to get around that kind of statement, you know. We don't like dictatorialness, but God is. God is not open to our discussion. And and it's very interesting to me here that 
that when this group first met, Jesus commanded them. He ordered them. And, and there were three things that he said to him that, that are just too incredible. Number one, stay. Stay. That's what he said right there. He said, do not depart from Jerusalem. Stay. I think he understood the human spirit, the restlessness of the human heart. That's our culture. That's the world that we live in, isn't it? We're in a fast food generation. If we don't like it here, we'll go there. And you can imagine with the disciples how very real that was. Just consider it, folks. They had watched Jesus get arrested. They had watched him get beaten up. They'd watched him be crucified. They had watched and listened to the screaming mob. They had to hide for their lives. They were in fear for their own lives. I can understand it. I don't think Jesus was scolding them. I think what Jesus was doing was telling them what would be the best thing for them because he knew. <laughs> Stay. Stay right where you are. Somebody here right now, you're getting ready to get up and go. Stay. Don't give up on your marriage today. Stay. Don't give up on your sons and your daughters. Stay. Don't give up on your circumstance. Stay the course. Hold steady. The disciples, Jesus looked at them and he knew their human heart. He knew the restlessness. He knew the buzz and the talk. In America today, the royal runaround is going on. People are restless. We are restless. The human heart is looking, is searching. If I don't find it here, I better go there. I better get me. We, we've got ants in our pants, so to speak. We can't sit still. We've got to keep on going. And, and Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, just just stay. You know, when I began personally to, to study this passage over and over again, the bells began to ring in my own human heart. Just stay. Just understand that I am the Lord your God. Just know that I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't left. Haven't gone to sleep. I'm there for you. Just stay. The second command was wait. This is an active ingredient. He engaged them in their staying. He didn't say just stay and sit. He said actively Engage yourself in the practicalities of waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. You know, and it seems to me here, isn't this just like Jesus, that he would insert that little word promise. God never fails. His promises are absolutely certain. And the future is as bright as the promises of God. God is on his throne. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten me. He hasn't forgotten America. He hasn't left and gone to another country. He's already there. Sometimes you'll feel that he's gone out of your marriage. He's gone out of your life. He's gone out of your work. 
He's gone out of your faithfulness, and you've grown weary in well-doing. God says to you, stay. Stay the course. I'm calling upon you today to stay the course. Let's stand up and be counted. Let's stay. Let's say, I'm here, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Use me. I'm only just beginning. And today is going to be the first day of the rest of my life. I will stay for you. Then he says, wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you what, most of us, including me, we have a real problem in waiting. Because our tendency is to want it now. We do live in a fast food generation. I mean, nothing can upset me more than going to my favorite coffee shop and having to wait more than 30 seconds to get my cup of coffee. I mean, I want to look across the counter and say, do you people not know who I am? What is this? You've got to brew it first before you serve it to me. We want it now, don't we? Isn't that, isn't that part of our nature? Can we just be honest with that? What are you expecting right now from the Lord? Are you willing to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit? And the third thing he said is follow. That's the key ingredient of discipleship. Remember now he's talking to these men who comprised the early church who didn't know anything. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what to expect. They were, they were fearsome. They were troubled in their hearts. They were restless. And yet God began to speak to them, and the Lord Jesus gathered them together, and he said, he said listen, Here's what you've got to do. Stay right where you are. Number two, wait on the Holy Spirit. And number three, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, follow Him. Do exactly what it is that He tells you to do. And He said, here is what it's going to incorporate. He said, here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is going to empower you to become witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. When you follow hard after God, just stay, wait, and get ready to do it. God will do it. I'm calling us together to do just that. I'm asking the Lord to help me to stay in Him, in His abiding presence, to wait on what it is that God by His Spirit is continuous present tense saying to me, directing me, because without him, I'm nothing. It's the Spirit of God that according to what Jesus said, remember what I told you about him. What did Jesus say? The Spirit of God will convict you of your sin. The Spirit of God will convict you concerning your righteous living. And the Spirit of God will convict you concerning this whole issue of future judgment. It's going to show you. It's going to teach you. It's going to help you. Wait. And when you hear from him, follow him. Do it. And some today might say to me, Well, Pastor, what exactly is he saying? A lot of things. He's talking to all of us individually, he's calling us out. He's marked us as one of His own. He's blessing us. And what we're going to discover is that the power of the Spirit of God came down upon the New Testament church and created a buzz like you and I cannot imagine. 
The power of the Spirit of God came down upon these people. And extraordinary things began to take place. They began to see things that they never imagined possible before. They began to go to places they never imagined they could ever go to before. They accomplished things they never imagined they could ever accomplish before. God did something so great. I want to be part of something that God does that's so much bigger than me, that leaves me like a little pinprick on this entire planet, standing amazed in the presence of a holy and a righteous God. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm gonna be opening up this altar to you today. I'm gonna ask some of our leaders and deacons to lead the way, life group leaders, teachers. We're gonna open up this altar as the altar of God's grace. I'm gonna ask you in a moment to leave your seat if God so puts it in your heart. Come and inquire about your salvation in Christ. Come and request prayer for that deep need that you have in your life. Come and express your desire to become part of a, of a church, a fellowship like this. You need to put your roots down. It's time. Step over the line. Make a decision. Do it. And today we're going to open up this altar because of the beautiful name of Jesus. The beautiful, beautiful, wonderful name of Jesus. Because he was the word from the very beginning and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. This is God's altar. It's not First Baptist Church's altar, our altar, your altar. This is God's place. You do business with him right there where you sit, upstairs, downstairs. You turn your life over to Christ. Give your heart to Jesus today and begin to make a difference for Jesus. Let's make a, let's make a decision today as a people that we will stay, that we will wait on him and that we will follow him to the ends of the earth. We will do it. You come, the altar is open to all who seek his face today. Let's stand together. You come as we begin to sing. You come. Our time is gone for now, but the ministry of the Encouraging Word goes on 24 hours a day. For a copy of today's message, call 866-899-WORD and ask for your free CD or DVD. You can also stream it online right now at fbs.org live and share it with your friends. We have a number of sermon series from Dr. Wilson, also listed online at theencouragingword.org. And remember the number on your screen connects you directly to members of our team, happy to take your call 24 hours a day to talk, to listen, or pray. Maybe even connect you with some of our free resources like the Daily Encouraging Word Bible Guide. Now before we go, a closing word from our pastor and chief encourager, Dr. Don Wilton. The greatest joy of my life was when I gave my heart to Jesus. And you're ready to do the same thing, aren't you? I want to pray a prayer with you right now. Would you pray this prayer from your heart? Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know Jesus died on a cross and was raised by the power of God and is alive. I repent of my sin, confessing to Jesus and trusting you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome to the family of God, my friend. I want you to pick up the phone, call that number on the television screen open 24-7. We want to get alongside of you and encourage you, be partnered with you in your journey as a believer. And I want you also to know something. Whatever you do, don't go away because I'll be right back. One of the most painful things in life is when you love someone and then you see them leave and go away. Sometimes they keep returning to the same unhealthy condition as a result of making unwise choices. But be encouraged, prodigals do come back and they can be set free. 
Join Dr. Wilton as he takes you deep into the heart of the Father's love in this message, Trusting God with Your Prodigal. For an additional gift, you'll receive the Praying Your Prodigal Home Book, a powerful book of insight and encouragement. Both of these ministry resources will provide you with biblical principles on how to pray effectively for your lost loved one. You'll be inspired and encouraged as you read real-life testimonies of other families on this same journey. Write to us at Post Office Box 2110, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304, or call now at 866-899-WORD. Or you can visit us online at theencouragingword.org. When you call to request these ministry resources, please share the name of your loved one. We want to pray with you in faith, believing God for your prodigal. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. You know, you might be asking that age-old question, what's next? Good question. Many of you have given your life to Christ. But that's not what's next, even though I rejoice with you. Many of you have rededicated your lives to Christ. What incredible joy. But here's what's next. Where are you going to go to church? You need to be in a Bible-believing church. You can come right here to our church if you're in Spartanburg area. It's not about being a Baptist church or a Presbyterian church or a charismatic church. But we are connected into a variety of churches of every description, all teaching God's Word across the country. We want to connect you. Call us. We'll help you. Get connected.